I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I know that there are a number of studies on folate supplementation that not only show there's an association of decreased risk with it, but actually if it's given to uh, mothers that have had a previous child with autism, it decreases the risk of their next child. So, but the form of it, I don't honestly know. But, you know, as you know, folate supplementation has been part of preventing neural tube defects. And so it's been, and that, there's very good evidence for that too. So there's yet another reason why, and folate does control growth. Folate is critical for cell growth, cell division. So the mechanism is not entirely known. And, and the formulation and stuff is, is, you know more about it than I do. A lot of the challenge to those kinds of studies is association versus causation, right? But I do think, in general, the medical community should be extremely cautious about prescri you know, prescribing these kinds of medications. And one of the things that disturbs me in independent of autism, for example, is there's a real trend for medicines that affect psychiatric disorders being shifted into children. You know, so there's a real push right now to identify, well, can we identify bipolar or major depressive disorder in an eight-year-old? And oh, let's give them this. And there is no knowledge whatsoever what those drugs do to brain development. So there is a very disconcerting shift from pharmaceutical companies who want to do what? They want to sell pharmaceuticals. And they're moving those drugs from adult populations into kids. And I think it's a very bad idea. And there's very little data on what effect those medications have to brain development. You know, independent of the one you raise, which is when a mother who may need it to you know, have a healthy pregnancy, that's the, what you're balancing, right? Does the mom, is she so severely affected that she needs to have these medications to have a healthy pregnancy, right? And what are the consequences of that? But I think the number of medications and environmental factors that are going to have some incremental effect on this, they're going to be large. And we're just beginning to get enough numbers to be able to measure them. So when you have a twofold effect, you know, you have to have hundreds to a thousand kids in your study. Um, so. Even within the epidemiology community, this idea that environment, there's a real increase, is not accepted everywhere, right? And, you know, it's, all, it, it's impossible to, to look perfectly into the past, but you can do epidemiology that tries to control for those things, such as, what's the age of first diagnosis? Because if the awareness is, is increasing, then it's likely that we'll see shifts in the age of diagnosis reflecting that change in the community. And if you factor that in, which my colleagues at UC Davis have done, you cannot account for the changes in California, which is their population base. You can't do it, right? So every piece of evidence that I say, including these rates that just came out of CDC recently, say that, but incidence is somewhat easier to measure, but your point is well taken. It's going to be reflected in severity as well, which also means if we can find out what those factors are and back away from them, we can do good things, as I'm sure you're aware. A parent who has a child with autism, if they can write, if they can have a vocabulary of 400 words compared to nothing, that's huge, huge in the effect of that child and their life and the dynamics of their family and what they can hope for. You know, so your point is very well taken that the severity of the disease, if we can push back on that, that would be worth it alone in a very big way. So there is a very important difference in the incidence between boys and girls. It's somewhere between four and five fold. And the truth is, we don't know why. We don't know for certain 
why boys are so more susceptible, besides the fact that we all know men are weaker and women are better. <laughs> we know this. But aside from that, now why? All yes. <laughs> so, um, one possibility is related to growth. So there's quite a, and this is a hypothesis, okay? There's a lot of evidence that regulation of growth during development, the more growth you have, the more susceptible to autism. So there are a lot of tumor suppressor genes that are susceptibility genes for autism. Tuberous sclerosis, NF1, a variety of them, okay? And boys are bigger than girls. They grow more in utero. This connection with diabetes is also perhaps related to that because if you have gestational diabetes or children born to diabetic mothers, they're big. If you look at head circumference, among autistic children, they're bigger. Literally, the brain growth. If you look at patterns of brain growth during development, they're bigger in autistic kids. And it's also true, it's bigger in boys. So the reason I s just tell you about that hypothesis is because we don't have an explanation for something doesn't mean it's bunkum. It means we don't know, right? So you have to look at the data on its face. And the data clearly say genetics is important, and environment is important, the interaction is important, but all the mechanistic details, we don't have them yet. So, um, and we still have to start making decisions about how to do something about one in 65, 68 children has an autism spectrum disorder. Well, the, the, the problem you raise when you're an epidemiologist, these are confounding factors, right? And so like some of the studies that I've told you about, they control for that. In other words, so they look at the relationship between the disease incidence and everything from uh, age of the mother, household income, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're a really good epidemiologist, of course you're a wizard at figuring out what those potential confounding factors are and controlling for them so you don't make a correlation that's only a correlation, you know. Um, but, you know, for example, let's take the, the incidence of obesity and diabetes. That's socioeconomic, right? You know, it's patterns of, it's not just, it's patterns of calorie intake, et cetera, right? So all of those factors are going to, you know, and so will proximity to, to uh, pesticides. You know, so many of those things are going to. And the challenge for the epidemiologists to make sure that they are isolating each of those variables they're interested at a time is to control for them. But, but yes, they will follow and they will be influenced by socioeconomic status. Like, where do you live? Do you live out in the burbs where the air is better or do you live in downtown LA? You know, that will have an impact. Epigenetics means that there are mechanisms that are important for the expression of genetic material, right? So it's, DNA is just sequence, and it has to be translated into how the cell works and is instructed to work. And there are systems for controlling how that expression is achieved. And those systems can actually be inherited from cell to cell, and even from parent to child. In other words, the, the architecture of the mechanism controlling information flow. It's not inherently genetic, right? It's not in the DNA sequence, but it is actually the structure of that is inherited from mother to child. And that, but that structure is malleable by environment, like nutritional starvation, that those regulatory proteins and they shift around and stuff, and then that new structure is inherited. So it's sort of, it's quasi-inherited things but they're not in the DNA sequence itself. So that's another level of how environment can change things because it changes these long-standing regulatory mechanisms that are put into place, sometimes across generations, but they're not permanent, right? But they're pretty permanent. They can certainly go across generations. So that's another way that environment can have long-term. So there have been effects like that, epigenetic effects, that go four generations out, okay? So they're pretty lasting.
Thank you very much. Good night.